Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel Get Geomatics Engineering. In this channel, we learn and explore geomatics engineering related content. If you are new to this channel, then please go through our previous video lectures and share your valuable feedback in the comment section so that we can improve our content more. In the last video, we had seen some geometric errors and in this video, we will see their correction mechanism. So before going to start with geometric corrections, I would like to explain a basic idea about GCPs that is ground control points. So let's start with it. We all know geometric distortions introduced by sensors like pitch, roll, yaw, which comes under attitude error. Okay. And this all things I had already discussed in my previous video lecture. So they all play a major role in order to create geometric distortions in the imagery, which can only be corrected using the ground control points. A ground control point is nothing but it is a location on the surface of the earth. Either it is a road intersection, either it is a building or it is a electric pole that can be identified on the imagery and located accurately on the map. So this is the definition of GCPs. There are the five, these are five different types of GCP marker we, which we will generally use in order to create GCPs on the ground, ground surface. So the image analyst must be able to obtain two sets of coordinate associated with each single GCP. The first one is image coordinate, which are mainly in I row and J column. And the second one is map coordinate, which are mainly in X, Y locations like a degree of latitude and degree of longitudes and this uh, the paired coordinate like i j and x y from many gcps let's suppose 20 they can be modeled to drive geometric transformation coefficient i will explain you what is this coefficient okay later so this coefficient what will do they may be used to geometrically rectify the remote sensor data to a standard data and map projection there are several ways to get accurate ground control points the first one is hard copy planimetric maps. For example, survey of India topographic maps where GCP's coordinate are extracted using simple ruler measurement or use, they are using coordinate digitizer tool. Okay. Then next one is digital planimetric maps in which the GCP's coordinate are extracted directly from the digital maps of on the screen. And the third one is global posi positioning system. That is what we call GPS. This, this is the instrument that may be taken into the field to obtain the coordinate of the object then plot all those coordinates on the screen and georeference the map. So these are the several ways to get accurate GCPs. Next we move to how to take ground control points. These are some points which we need to remember. The, so the first one is it should be non-collinear. Non-collinear means the GCPs should not be like in a straight line whether it is a x, x direction or it is a y direction it should not be like that it should be always non collinear then the second one is it should be randomly distributed randomly, randomly distri distributed means if this is your like study area so it should not be like only cover like four corners it should cover all your area of interest randomly and with known objects means the GCP's markers are like identifiable on the imagery. So we generally take like buildings, trees, a statue or electric poles. These are the points which are generally identifiable on the imagery. So we take those points only. And the uh, fourth one is it should it should cover all the corners means your area of interest. Let's suppose this is your area of interest. So the GCP point should cover all your corners of your area of interest. If like you take the GCPs like that way. So what will happen? It will only consider these areas and it will not consider these areas. So the, so the uh, locations of this area are wrong means the X, Y coordinates of these areas are generally distorted. Next, we move to geometric corrections. So commercial remote sensor data, for example, IRS image, spot, they already have much of systematic errors removed unless we have to process. But however, unsystematic random errors remains in the image. 
which making it non planimetric that means the pixels are not in their correct xy coordinates so the two common geometric corrections procedure are often used by the scientists to make the digital remote sensor data useful the first one is image to map rectification and the second one is image to image registration the general thumb rule says that to rectify remotely sensed data we generally use image to map projection the therefore most of the discussion will focus on image to map rectification only so let's start with image to map rectification image to map rectification is a process by which the geometry of an image is made planimetric which means the pixels are in their correct xy coordinate so whenever accurate area dis direction and distance measurement are required image to map geometric rectification should be performed however it may not remove all the distortions caused by topographic relief displacement in the images generally when we get raw image from the satellite it has no reference to the ground so when you have a raw image they are mainly in their pixel coordinate system to give that image a reference to real ground you have to assign a geographic coordinate system but being a curvy linear coordinate system they will restrict you from making measurements so we need to transform the geographic coordinate system into projected coordinate system that means after image to map rectification your image will have three coordinate system the first one is pixel coordinate system the second one is geographic coordinate system that is what we call gcs and the third one is projected coordinate system pcs this will give you pixels value like 594,687 or we can say brightness value it will give you latlon value latitude and longitude and pcs will allow you to do measurements so that's all about image to map rectification now let's move to image to image registration image to image registration is this translation and rotation alignment process that means if you have a raw image and you have to do georeferencing to it so instead of using geographic coordinate system or gcps what you will do you will use a second image of the same area it may not same geographical extent and that second image should have geo reference in itself that is the main criteria so this is what we known as image to image registration means using one reference image to to geo reference an uncorrected another image the same image processing principle are used in both image rectification and image registration but the basic difference is that in image to map rectification the reference is a map whereas in image to image registration the reference is another image but there is a problem in image to image registration what is let's suppose we have two image one is already geo reference and the another is we have to geo reference so what if that geo reference image is already a, a, a have a error okay it which which is inherent in the image so what will happen if we do image to image registration that error will convert into the new, new image and because of these characteristics most serious earth sense image sensing research is based on analysis of data that have been rectified on a map based approach and that is why the most of the discussion will focus on image to map rectification only so let's dive into the image to map rectification and try to find out what is the logic behind the operations of image to map rectification basically two basic operations must be performed to geometrically rectify remotely sensed image to a map coordinate system the first one is spatial interpolation and the second one is intensity interpolation we will see both of them first we will go for spatial interpolation in spatial interpolation first the geometric relationship between the input pixel coordinates and the associated map coordinates of the same point must be identified 
then the number of gcps pair are used to establish the nature of the geometric coordinate transformation that must be applied in order to rectify or fill every pixels in the output image this process is called spatial interpolation means if this is my input this is my output so first we will try to find the exact location in input like x dash comma y dash x comma y then we will use number of gcps ground control points what it, it will do it will just establish the coordinate transformations okay and what we will do it will convert that value into output let's suppose it is 15 so this 15 will convert in the new image that pixel value now it's 15 next we move to spatial interpolation using coordinate transformation so the relationship between the pixel coordinate system and the image coordinate system can be defined using polynomial transformation okay an image to map rectification require that polynomial equation to be fit to the gcps data using list square criteria to model the corrections directly in the image without identifying the source of the distortions so depending on the distortions in the imagery the, GC, the number of gcps is used if the distortion in the imagery is more then the higher order polynomial equation may be required to geometrically correct the data okay this is the formula to calculate minimum number of ground control points required for different polynomial transformations so here t is order of polynomial transformation if t equals to 1 then three numbers of gcp is required if t equals to 2 then six number of gcp is required and if t equals to 3 then 10 number of gcp is required but for first order polynomial transformation we generally take 3 plus 1 number of minimum gcps that is total 4 number of gcps why because just i am giving you one example take a paper okay so take a paper and fix it on a wall in three sides so you will see one side always create a problem that is why we fix three plus one number of minimum points for georeferencing next we move to concept of how different order transformations fit a hypothetical surface here a representing original observations b representing first order linear transformation c representing second order quadratic transformation and d representing third order cubic transformation so if the distortions is small or the area is a uh, smaller medium then we will go for linear transformation that is first order transformation and if the uh, distortion is large or the area is also large then we will go for third order cubic transformation so as i already said for moderate transformation or distortion for a small area we will generally use first order polynomial transformation that is linear transformation this type of transformation can model six kinds of distortion in the remote sensor data so the first two is translation in x and y the second two is 
scale changes in x and y and the fourth fifth is skew and the rotation is 6 1 so when all six operations are combined into a single expression it becomes x equals to a plus a1 x dash plus a2 y dash where x and y are the positions in the output rectified image or map and x dash y dash representing corresponding position in the original input image these values we know and we will get this output image x and y means location next we move to root mean a square error as we are using the six coordinate transformation coefficient to model distortions in the original image it is important to determine how will this six coefficient derive from the least square regression of the initial gcps in the input image and for that we often use root mean square error for the computation of each of the ground control points so rmac is a way to measure the accuracy of geometric rectification algorithm basically its coefficient this is the formula of rmac error where the x original and y original are the original row and column coordinate of the gcps in the image and x dash and y dash are the computed or estimated coordinate in the original image when we utilize this six coefficients so by computing this rmac error we will get to see which gcps contribute the greatest error in the algorithm and the sum of the total rmac error actually all of the original gcps that are selected usually not used to compute the final six parameter coefficient to rectify the input image there is an iterative process that take place first of all all the original gcps let's say example let's say example 20 gcps are used to compute the initial sets of six coefficients then the root mean square error associated with each of this initial 20 gcps is computed and summed then the individual gcps that contributed the greatest amount of error are determined and deleted so after the first iteration this might only only leaves 16 out of 20 gcps now after first iteration Sixteen GCPs leaves. Okay, so again a new set of coefficient is then computed using these sixteen GCPs, and the process continues until the RMAC re reaches a user specified threshold. So basically, the goal is to remove the GCPs that introduce the most error into the multiple regression coefficient computation. When the acceptable threshold is reached. The final coefficient are used to rectify the output image in a standard map projection. This is the chart which is showing the total RMAC error after the point like GCP, GCP's points are deleted. So as you can see when there is total 20 GCPs so the RMAC error is 11.016. After first iteration we remove one GCPs so the RMAC error will reduce to 8.542 and after removing 12 gcps like after different iteration finally we got 0 0.501 rmac error so this is the end of spatial interpolation next we move to intensity interpolation intensity interpolation involves the extraction of brightness value from original input image to rectified output image this pixel filling logic is used to produce the output image row by row and column by column. For example, you can see from the original input image, the point 2.4, 2.7 is filled, filled in rectified output image at a point of 5,4. There are different types of intensity interpolation. That is what we call resampling process. So the first one is nearest neighborhood. The second one is bilinear interpolation and the third one is cubic convolution. We will see one by one in the next slide. In nearest neighbor resampling, it uses the 
nearest nearest pixels like this pixel like let's suppose its value is 5 so it uses this pixels and fill that value to the rectified output image here so the benefit of using nearest neighbor resampling is the original pixel value maintain and it is a fast resampling method and the problem is it is pixel duplication next is bilinear interpolation bilinear interpolation calculates the output cell value by calculating the weightage average of the four closest input cells based on distance so what it takes it calculates four nearest input cells its average it calculates and then assign that value to the rectified output image so the benefit is it is more spatially accurate the smooth representation and good for mapping purposes and the problem is its original pixel value integrity lost and it is slower next is cubic convolution it is similar to bilinear interpolation the only difference is it takes closest 16 input cells based on distance and then assign that value to rectified output image the benefit of using cubic convolution is it is better than bi for mapping purposes and the only problem is again the in, uh, pixels value integrity lost so this is the end of geometric error and its correction mechanism in the next video lecture i will start with a new chapter called image enhancement thank you